This is a podcast from the Nuffield Department of Medicine. Dr. Antonio Balayos Baisa tells us about his research on rare neurological diseases. Hi, Antonio. Hi. What diseases do you work on? Well, I work on uh, neurological and neurodevelopmental diseases. So I joined the group of Professor Anthony Monaco mm -hmm. at the Wellcome Trust Center for Human Genetics. And he was basically studying the genetics of these diseases. There are common uh, but very complex disorders like autism and dyslexia and also uh, monogenic uh, rare disorders. My interest is mainly now on the functional characterization of genes and proteins that have been associated or found altered in these, disease, in these diseases. Um, just to simplify things, I think uh, it's better just to uh, focus on one of them. Mm -hmm. So uh, a particular one is a rare, very rare disorder. It's a, a called chorea acanthocytosis. Mm -hmm. For short, we call it CHAC. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a, a neurological disorder. It's recessive. That means that uh, the patients need to have both copies of the gene mutated. And it's, um, uh, it's an adult onset, meaning that uh, the symptoms, first symptoms usually appear usually between 20 and 40 years of age, mm. you know, in young adults. And it's a uh, progressive neurodegenerative, it involves movement disorder, um, uh, epileptic seizures, uh, tongue and lip biting, and it's chronic uh, and progressive, and it leads basically to short expectancy of life. Hmm. What is your approach then to this disease? Um, our approach is mainly from the molecular and cellular biology point of view, and that means that we use DNA and RNA from patients. We use, we work with proteins, we work with uh, cell and in vivo models. And what we try to do is to answer a few questions, you mm -hmm. know, like from very basic ones, like where the protein is in the cells, to other a bit more complicated, like, or more complex to answer, like uh, what pathways are uh, affected, with, you know, when this protein is altered. Can you give us an example of how your work has changed our understanding of this disease? Um, yeah, well, mainly and not only my work, but of course the previous work mm -hmm. in Professor mm -hmm. uh, Monaco's group uh, is uh, the pivotal one is the finding or the, the identification of the gene that is altering these uh, patients. Uh, this is a very large gene known as BPS13A and it produces a protein that we call corein. Okay. Um, so we have done um, extensive genetic uh, studies in many patients. Um, the goal is to identify mutations. And mutations are basically changes in DNA that have uh, an effect you know, in the protein. And we've learned that the, uh, most of these mutations lead to the loss of the protein, so the protein is not present. But also we've learned that there are a few mutations that instead of leading to uh, loss of the protein, they lead to a protein that is still there, but it mm -hmm. doesn't work. So this gives us a lot of information, you know, about important regions of the protein for the function. I see. What are the most important lines of research that have emerged in this field over the last five or ten years? Yeah, there have been this protein disorder in particular, uh, because it's a rare disorder. There has not been, you know, a lot of research put into it. Mm -hmm. um, but um, I would like just to um, um, take the opportunity to, you know, acknowledge the, the efforts of uh, put um, by a, um, a small um, association, you know, of uh, families, of patient families that have actually uh, provided great support to mm -hmm. many um, researchers in the community and they have um, provided not only with funding support but also you know, encouraging uh, interaction between researchers. This is the advocacy for neuroacanthocytosis patients. Mm -hmm. And uh, so there have been many groups around the world you know, involved in looking at this disorder from different points of view. And um, just to single, you know, a particular 
advance, for example, is that um, recently there has been made a connection with autophagy. So autophagy is a cellular process involved in degradation of toxic proteins or organelles, and it seems to have, you know, a relevant connection with other neurological disorders. Why does this line of research matter? Why, why should we put money into it? Yeah, if you think about it, there has been a lot of effort put into, uh, into the research of uh, human disorders from the genetic point of view, mm -hmm. finding the gene that is altered or associated with these disorders. The next logical step to take is actually understanding what these genes and proteins do, mm -hmm. uh, what are the processes that are affected. And so studying, you know, at the functional level, these genes and proteins is important for both the basic biological knowledge uh, of the disorders, but also it has a practical um, uh, derivation that is, you may find a specific targets, you know, where possible treatments can be uh, developed. And finally, because I don't want to forget this, is this is a very rare disorder. Mm. And mm. usually there is not much effort put into mm. rare disorders. They are often neglected. And I think it's important uh, it's also to study these disorders because they can also offer mm. some valuable insight into other neurological disorders. How does your work fit into translational medicine within the department? At the end of the day, the, f the long term goal is finding targets for possible treatments, mm -hmm. you know, to develop treatments in the future. Um, at this moment, this is not, you know, an actual option for uh, CHAC, for this disorder. But um, I can mention, for example, um, that another important issue for patients and their families is the proper diagnosis of the conditions. Sometimes it's very easy to have um, a number of disorders with similar symptoms and then families or the, even the clinicians, they don't really know exactly what they are. Mm -hmm. So knowing the gene now is very easy. The gold standard is, okay, finding the mutation in the gene. Mm -hmm. However, this particular gene is really complex. It's, um, uh, a lot of um, actions and it involves a large effort just to sequence, you know, and to find proper mm. uh, mutations. Mm. So we developed a few years ago um, another um, a test that is being used as a semi-diagnostic test and is based in the detection of the protein in blood samples. So basically, if we don't detect the protein, we say that that particular patient is affected. But the test is not 100% accurate because it provides or it gives false negatives. Okay. That means that sometimes it detects the protein mm. and maybe that particular case is actually a patient. Mm. So mm. in order to uh, prevent or to increase the accuracy of the test, we're actually working now in developing an improving version of the test. That's great, Andrew. That's really interesting. Thank you. Hi, my pleasure.